Excellent. Cool. Okay. All right, Joel. So Will is asking, is there any expensive brands actually worth the price? Thanks for the question, Will. When it comes to clothing itself, I would say you have to think about clothing and its utility. And that can be served by a $5 shirt and a $15 pair of pants. It covers you up. Anything beyond that is going to be value for the specific target demo or the specific consumer in mind. You know, we've done a lot of streetwear on the show and can one argue that a $400 t-shirt is valuable in terms of the quality aspect? You know, maybe not. But in terms of the clout and the recognition that you get from specific groups of people, that might be worth it for those consumers. When it comes to more technical stuff like a can of goose or architeric's jacket, while the quality may not be where it was a few years ago, those stuff serve a very particular need in terms of protecting you from the elements. And they also have a high price point to go along with it. So I wouldn't say high price points always mean high quality, but I would say high price points usually always mean there's a massive value exchange happening, whether it be psychological, clout, or technical. All right, Joe. Now, Ali Malik says, do you guys sell clothes? I'm tired of overpaying these designers. Okay, Ali. Uh, you know, right now, Ship Fashion Group is purely a B2B business. We work with brands and creators to create the fashion brand, create their collections and the manufacturing. I also own 3PL, so we do shipping. But that could be something that's interesting. I would say comment brand down below if you guys want us to to launch a brand. I think it might be cool content as well because we can show you the behind the scenes of our decision-making process of conceptualization all the way from creating uh, the products, the brand, the manufacturing. I'd be interested in doing it. I would say though, if I want to do this, it would have to be high quality products. It'd have to be something that's unique for all the products. There'd be a lot of thought and intention put into the product itself. I wouldn't want to just launch like a basic single jersey knit t-shirt, a million brands have that. It would have to almost be like a, a channel for me to put all my creativity in it. Something that I'm open to, you know, comment down below brand if you want to see us do that and we can take you along for the journey. Okay, Joe. So Monica Nialis963 says, this is amazingly detailed and can't wait to watch more. Really gives everyone an understanding what the difference between quality and marketing is. Appreciate the comment. You know, I think that's what we really wanted to do here in this process of creating these videos to give people a lot of insight in terms of what they're buying and educating consumers. So I really appreciate that you're loving the content. I appreciate everyone who's been supporting the content thus far. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with paying a high price for a product. I don't think there's anything wrong with a high markup either. It just needs to be a good quality product and in terms of sustainability as well, a really sustainable product is a product that lasts a long time. So I, I encourage brands to put the extra effort into taking over their manufacturing and, and monitoring it to tighten everything up so you launch a really good quality product and then market the hell out of it because there's always going to be a market for a high quality product. All right, Joe, so Lime says, can specific printing inks or stain contribute to the cost greatly or is it insignificant? Definitely, I, I would say, you know, I, I think when people see the color, let's say blue or the pink and blue on a screen print, they assume it's just all the same. But there's vastly different qualities in terms of screen printing materials. There's vastly different qualities in terms of stains and, and finishes and treatments. And, you know, I, I see this a lot with factories or I see this a lot with brands where they go to a region and say, I want this t-shirt and they get one quote and it's really cheap. And then they get another quote and it's a lot higher. It's like when you don't dig deep and you really look on the surface and they go, oh, it's just 180 GSM t-shirt with a screen print. It's like, no, what kind of yarn is, is making that t-shirt? What kind of, you know, screen printing materials are you using? And when it comes to brands, they really just look at it on the surface level. They might go to several manufacturers and get several quotes and say, 180 GSM t-shirt with a screen print and care label. And they just go with the cheapest uh, supplier. And they really don't ask the question, where's the thread coming? Where's the yarn coming from? Is it pretty shrunk? What kind of um, washability is the branding going to be through? There's so many questions that you need to ask. And that's kind of what we do for our brands is 
we asked, we knew all these questions, we asked them, but there's so many questions that you need to actually ask to see what am exactly am I paying for. So to really sum it up, yes, every single component to making a shirt is going to matter. Every single equipment that the factory uses is going to matter. I always tell our clients when they sign off, I can make you a $5 legging, I can make you a $30 legging. Really, what do you want and what is right for your brand at the end of the day? Okay, Joe, Cody says, love what you do. A t-shirt, regardless of quality, is not worth $300, not even $100, in my humble opinion. Cody, I appreciate the, the comment. Again, it really all depends on whoever's buying it at the end of the day. Uh, I think what we don't realize is there's a significant large part of the population where the difference between $50, $100, and $400 for clothing doesn't mean anything to them. Um, and there's also another part of the population where they want really high quality stuff and maybe they want the story or the narrative that comes behind it. Look at Laurel Piana, really high quality shirts, but they have like thousand dollar t-shirts, which is absolutely insane. I believe when it comes to products like that, at some point there's diminishing returns where the vast majority of people, like 99.999%, aren't even gonna notice the difference between this uh, $1,000 t-shirt and uh, let's say a $100 t-shirt, but it really comes down to the user at the end of the day and what they want, you know. There's a product called Sea Island Cotton, which is the best, best, best cotton in the world. You're not gonna find a Sea Island Cotton t-shirt for less than $100, just because the amount of work to get that up and running and the amount of R&D to get that up and running, brands aren't gonna be willing to go through that effort, and there's just not enough people to sell enough volume to sell something like that at a lower cost. Okay, Joe, my control says, how do you feel about the current demand for scoop neck, or at least necklines that reveal the collarbones? Okay, uh, I'm gonna be forthright. Trends is not my area of expertise for that. I'm gonna get Jess, who is our trend expert, and I'm gonna have her answer that question for you. Hi, I'm Jess. When it comes to trends, those macro and micro trends depending on the country, region, and location style preference. Now, it will be hard to get into this video right now about all the trends coming up for 2024, but what I can tell you is that scene in Devil Wells Prada, when they take out that blue belt and they tell you the story of the waterfall effect, that's actually pretty true. Now what I can tell you is if you're interested in learning more, especially about upcoming trends for fall and winter 24 and past into 2025, comment trends below. I'll be happy to share more with you.